Good afternoon, Kitchissippi. It is Saturday, April the 8th. This is a video version of the 89th Kitchissippi Newsletter. The usual reminder, if you're not signed up for the newsletter, I'd encourage you to do so at kitchissippiward.ca. The newsletter comes out about once a week. We try to keep it to just what you need to know about what's going on in the neighborhood with respect to traffic, construction, development, and uh, what's going on at City Hall. It has been a fairly busy week, so let's jump right into it. Uh, First off, the Quarterly Ward Forum is coming up uh, this week on April the 12th. We'll be holding that at the Churchill Senior Center from 6 until 9 p.m. We hold a uh, Quarterly Ward Forum once every three months or so uh, as an opportunity to uh, have a town hall, talk about the issues that are of concern to the neighborhood, as well as uh, usually have a few guest speakers. This week, our guest speakers are going to include Grant McSheffrey. He's a three-time winner on Jeopardy just recently. I uh, talked to him a bit about his experiences on the show. If I understand, my staff have got me going up against him and local historian Dave Alston in a trivia challenge. And uh, maybe more importantly, we have Rob Wilkinson at Safer Roads Ottawa coming in. Safer Roads Ottawa runs a lot of uh, pedestrian and cycling and street safety campaigns to talk to us about what we can do in Kitchissippi to make safer streets. More on that in a moment. Uh, this week at the uh, Committee of Adjustment, uh, we don't yet have the decisions of the April 5th hearing. I'll get those online as soon as we can. Uh, the next hearing is going to be on April the 19th. The Committee of Adjustment has a few different Kitchissippi Ward issues on its plate. At 639 Highland, uh, the owner is seeking to subdivide, keep the existing detached dwelling, and build a new detached dwelling. They need some minor variances with respect to, uh, as usually, some of the uh, the lot width and, uh, and uh, setback. Also, uh, behind me here at the Dover Court Recreation Center, they're looking for a front yard setback uh, variance in order to facilitate the expansion work that they have planned. So that will be on the docket. And also at 181 Richmond Road, uh, this has come up a couple of times, the request for a patio variance at the uh, Bite This location at 181 Richmond Road. Also in the newsletter this week, the Harmer Pedestrian Bridge is getting rebuilt and we're working with staff in the uh, immediate community on the design of that. There are some minor repairs to be done to the underside of the bridge. Uh, so this, um, uh, from Monday, April the 10th until Thursday, there are going to be a couple of nights of work on the underside of the bridge. I don't expect that to cause too much disruption. Uh, it does mean uh, that on April 10th uh, through 12th, uh, the westbound access from Parkdale Avenue is going to be closed that's already well signed but something to be aware of there during the course of construction that bridge will be open for pedestrian traffic a couple of uh, key items from the Transportation Committee meeting this week. I think a lot of residents have heard about the paid parking discussion that we've been having in Kitchissippi. I think most people are probably aware paid parking on Richmond, Wellington, Somerset was not one of the recommendations that staff brought to the Transportation Committee for our ward. That's because the consensus wasn't there among the ward councillor, the BIAs and the community associations. The recommendations passed. There are some tweaks with respect to how long you can park on the street. They've carved a few more parking spots out. They're calling for greater enforcement. But the paid parking, or rather the absence of it, was the cause of some consternation in other parts of the city that have it. The way the system works, requiring the consensus of all those different parties, means that paid parking probably won't go in anywhere, even where it's determined by staff that the uh, demand for parking warrants the implementation of paid parking. Committee are going to be dealing with that by uh, asking the uh, next council to deal with the rules for implementing paid parking. I support that. I don't sit on transportation committee but participated in the meeting and I did urge my uh, colleagues to um, support that motion. There was some thought of implementing paid parking despite the rules and I urged my colleagues not to do so but rather to follow the appropriate process. 
Also at the uh, Transportation Committee last week, we dealt with the city's new proposed policy for implementing a 30 km per hour limit on residential streets. The city has a policy that will make it possible on streets that are already very slow to implement a 30 km per hour limit. On streets that are uh, currently operating at more than 35 km per hour, they've opened up a new petition process to allow residents to ask that the speed limit on their street be reduced to 30. There are some fairly restrictive um, conditions under which the city will consider it. Essentially, any street that is uh, uh, very busy, over 2,500 cars a day, streets that are fairly wide, um, and streets that have relatively frequent transit service on them, won't be eligible for a 30 kilometer per hour limit. I, I think that the new rules on a lot of our streets in Westboro, uh, in McKellar Park, will be eligible, but some of our streets that have schools on them won't be. Uh, I raised some concerns about that. I have had discussions with staff, and the um, I am going to be supporting the new 30 kilometer per hour limit. It doesn't help us in all instances, but it is one more tool in the kit. I think our hope for um, a broader application of 30 kilometers per hour will come from the new provincial legislation that is currently winding its way through Queen's Park. On um, March the 20th, I believe, uh, I may have that date wrong, our MPP, Yasser Nakvi, uh, addressed the House asking uh, the Legislative Assembly to support that new 30 km per hour um, uh, legislation that would also implement um, uh, photo radar. Uh, that should be coming to a committee sometime over the next couple of months. My intention is to uh, speak to the committee about the necessity of doing that. Uh, I've put in a little bit of a clip of uh, MPP Nakvi, Minister Nakvi, speaking to that here. I have heard from moms, I have heard from dads, I have heard from teachers, I have heard from our seniors that, uh, that our streets, our neighborhood streets, uh, are getting um, unsafe because of speeding. And one of, the, one of the issues that was raised to me by many community champions in my riding of Ottawa Centre was a mechanism uh, for municipalities to reduce the default speed limit from 50 kilometers an hour to something less, be it 40 kilometers an hour or 30 kilometers an hour. Also in the newsletter this week, uh, there is now an open house planned for the application that has been made by the owner of the Wellington Diner that is at 1385 Wellington West. Uh, that open house is going to be held at the Hintonburg Community Centre, that's at 1064 Wellington Street West on April the 13th. Uh, the full details are in the newsletter. Uh, I believe that will be a, a usual uh, 7 o'clock until 9 o'clock, but check the newsletter or the, um, uh, the website for the exact times. There is also in the newsletter this week uh, an item, uh, the LRT detours, that's the uh, detour of buses during LRT construction from uh, roughly 2021 until 2023 down Scott Street um, and then on a new temporary transitway in between Workman and the transitway. Uh, we had an open house, uh, very well attended, a couple of hundred people last week. Uh, the full presentation is available. We streamed that on Facebook so you can watch the video Video, and the presentation boards are now online. There's a link to that in the newsletter. My next pop-up office hours, I just finished uh, a weekend pop-up here at Dovercourt, are going to be held on April the 27th from 12.30 until 3.30 in the lobby of the Great Canadian Theatre Company. Uh, there's no appointment necessary. Come on out and chat about whatever is on your mind. Something I've been uh, really excited to work on for the course of the past two years or so, just side of the desk, has been uh, to help Ottawa's music industry. I think there are a lot of advantages uh, to all residents of Ottawa when we have a music strategy and we have a strong music industry. In the run-up to the Junos last week, uh, a number of us in the industry were really thrilled when Mayor Watson made an announcement that he's going to put around $30,000 into developing a music strategy strategy for Ottawa. We're thrilled, it means a lot more work to come, but it is the first step in uh, developing a strategy for how we can bolster the economic and cultural potential of our music industry. Here's Mayor Watson making that announcement. 
So they've done some great work, the industry, but we need a little bit of a coordinated approach. And that's why I'm pleased to announce today that with my colleague Jeff Lieber, the City of Ottawa, together with the Ottawa Music Industry Coalition, will strike a task force of music industry stakeholders and business leaders from connected sectors such as the Festival Network and Ottawa Tourism to develop something we need to chart our future, the very first Ottawa music strategy in our city's history. <laughs> Also in the news center this week, the Westboro Village BIA has a new director. Uh, I do want to welcome on board Darren Prashad. Darren is the uh, manager of, um, uh, sorry, uh, Merit Travel in Westboro. Uh, he's joined as a director. I know that the directors of our BIAs put in uh, a fair number of extra hours on top of the work that they're already doing professionally. And uh, my thanks go to Darren for stepping up and doing that service. Uh, the uh, news center has a number of uh, other items in it with respect to uh, various different events going on. One that I would highlight, the tickets are now on sale or the, the registration is now open for the Hintonburg Street Hockey Tournament, something near and dear to my heart. Check the newsletter or the Hintonburg Community Association website at hintonburg.com for full details of how you can register. Uh, it has been a couple of uh, very busy weeks. It seems as though um, I'm sitting on every committee right now. I do sit on the Transit Commission, the Environment Committee, and the planning committee in addition to some smaller ones uh, but I've been participating in the finance and economic development committee the community and protective services committee while we were talking about sanctuary city for Ottawa marathon seven and a half hour meeting uh, as well as uh, transportation committee recently talking about a lot of issues that's going to calm down in the next couple of weeks it has been a busy time for Kitchissippi uh, the next um, this next week is going to be relatively short uh, because of the Easter holiday Holiday. I'm looking forward to some meetings on the urban forestry plan, affordable uh, housing, next steps on our music strategy, transit service in the ward post LRT. Uh, I'm also wrapping up my summer intern interviews. I'm going to have some tough choices ahead. I've interviewed a few great candidates already, hoping to have a choice made there soon. At planning committee, our own, the only committee meeting on which I sit uh, next week, there are no Kitsch City, uh, Kitchissippi items in particular. There's a controversial proposal for a mid-rise in the Glebe and also the application for the demolition of a property at 234 O'Connor that staff have recommended we reject. Um, also of note uh, on the planning committee meeting there is a new affordable housing policy. Not a lot of huge changes in there but one really welcome one. Uh, in the city has a policy of taking 25% uh, of the revenue that it raises from the sale of its surplus lands and putting those into affordable housing. That's not the case for lands that are currently zoned institutional. That's a bit of a loophole and we are losing out as a result. Uh, at Bayview, uh, the old Bayview school site in River Ward, uh, we recently sold surplus land to be developed into residential, but because it is currently zoned institutional, there was no contribution to affordable housing. The new policy, if it's adopted, will close uh, that loophole. Uh, finally, I just wanted to provide a, a quick update uh, with respect to the street renamings. Uh, it may not have been uh, immediately apparent in the uh, blog post that I put up, link is uh, in, the, uh, in the newsletter and on the website, that when the city uh, needs to rename a street, it will leave the new name up to the community. Uh, the city doesn't have any new names in mind for the streets that have to be renamed. One of the simplest is, for example, on Piccadilly, where there's a big break and one portion has to be renamed simply to call it Piccadilly South. When residents on those affected streets receive their letter, there will be the suggestion of simply adding a north or a south, even an upper or a lower to the name, or leaving open the possibility of a new name. Given that we'll be looking for some degree of consensus from residents about how they'd like to rename their street, I'm going to suggest that the most popular choices will probably be to add north or south onto those names. Have a great week, Kitchissippi. It is a short one. I'm looking forward to the break um, and uh, have a very happy Easter. Uh, have a great week, Kitchissippi. Thanks for watching.